Hello, everybody. Just coming at the beginning of this podcast, just to make a few corrections that I noticed while editing this uh, particular episode. So for one, we recorded this over Zoom, and there is a little bit of lag between my responses and my dad's responses. So I try to cut that out. The other thing is to, during the podcast, I did play some music for my dad. And when you listen to the podcast, you'll realize why I did that. I had to take out the music because of copyright reasons. So there's sometimes, you'll, you'll notice it in the podcast that I say, oh, I'm gonna play this song, but then I actually don't. I cut to us just talking about it. And then another thing was that I mentioned that Larry Graham was from Cool in the Game, but he's actually from Sly and the Family Stone. When I was listening to the edit, I noticed, I was like, okay, wait, why would I say that? But I think I just got those mixed up. And also since this particular episode is about a music documentary, a lot of this episode just devolves into me and my dad just talking about music for a long time. The <laughs> last thing you'll notice is that I keep saying Charles Barkley when I actually mean Charles Bradley. I do clarify it in the podcast, but just keep that in mind. I say Charles Barkley like about five times. All right. Thank you so much, guys, for listening to this episode. Episode number nine with my dad. And we're reviewing the music documentary, our very first documentary, the music documentary, Charles Bradley, Soul of America. I'm just going to do the, uh, the quick intro and then we'll get started. Um, we're going to get like right into it, basically. I'm not going to have that. Not that long of an intro. Let me uh, hold on here one second. Mm-hmm. Alrighty, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Movie Boarding, the movie podcast where I force my family and friends to watch a movie. And today we have a family member. I am your host, uh, Brian, a.k.a. Kingston Hannibal. And today, like I mentioned, I have a very, very special guest with me. Someone who has been with me my entire life and who shares a lot of my passions. Music, movies, food, sports. But today we're going to be talking about two of those. And he is the reason why I'm alive, or one of the reasons why I'm alive. Um, one of the two the, reasons. Yeah, one of the two reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's been wanting uh, him on the podcast. You guys asked for him, and he's here by popular demand. <laughs> I don't know. So everybody, please wel- welcome my dad, a.k.a. Ricardo, a.k.a. Rick, a.k.a. Ranger Rick. And there's a round of applause for you there, Dad. I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> How you doing, Dad? I'm doing great. Thank you, son, for having me around. No problem. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for indulging me in, in this. And like I told you, we're going to get right into it. I know uh, you you guys are busy trying to, with the congregation and the move. So, and also you're two, I'm two hours ahead. So <laughs> yeah, um, you're tired. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So for this episode, we're going to be doing into a uh, very, uh, I guess you could say powerful, very, a very fun documentary. It's called uh, Charles Barkley, Soul of America. Have you heard of, I know you've heard of this because I told you like 20 minutes ago or, or like an hour ago, what we we're going to watch. But before that, mm-hmm. have you heard of this documentary before? No. I oh. heard of Charles Barkley, the basketball player. Charles, <laughs> yes, Charles. We're, we're, we're going to talk about Charles Bradley, not Charles Barkley. I thought and you said Bra- Bar- Barkley. It, it might have. It might have uh, yes. It did? It might have autocorrected yeah. it. No. I didn't know you, that he made also Soul uh, music, music, but that, that's okay. That would have been an awesome... Uh, <laughs> That would have been an awesome uh, documentary yeah. if Charles Barkley made. I wonder if he's going to throw chairs in this one, too, or people <laughs> through the glass. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't want to give too much away, but like, you have you heard of Charles Bradley as a soul singer? Uh, no. I, I'm almost positive you might have heard some of his music just because if you were around me, I was probably playing it. But other than that, probably not. Um, mm-hmm. But I will say this this documentary follows the uh, incredible journey of this soul singer who actually became famous later on in life. So when he got, I guess, broke it big, he was in his 60s. Um, mm-hmm. And he has a very, um, very unique voice. And his story is, is pretty unique, too. Um, and it's and it's a very it's a very touching uh, documentary. It's short. It's like about an hour, an hour 15. Um, so we're going to watch the movie mm-hmm. together and then we can talk about it. And um, but before we get into that, um, like I mentioned, you and I, um, one of our passions is movies. So we're, that's where we're watching. But music for uh, for our family has mm-hmm. been very important. And I would say that music has always been around ever since I was little. I think some of my memories are a lot of them have to do with music. Um, 
And then, uh, so for you, was music uh, important for you growing up? Absolutely, yeah. Um, ever since I remember, um, I'm not sure how or why, but yeah, definitely, it's it's been something that that has been part of the life, you know, since I remember. I think your grandpa was really pretty much into it, and it, the the thing with him is different kinds of music, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from Spanish to jazz to orchestral. Yeah, and then I started. I think you know, you know, my favorite group is the Beatles, yeah. of course. But same. I think since I started listening on my own, it was with the Beatles, and okay. I may have been like six, seven years old. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I bring this question up because there's certain songs that I have like a memory of. So whenever I hear, let's say, for instance, um, the song by Red Hot Chili Pepper Scar Tissue. Mm -hmm. I think that was popular when you would go on trips to Phoenix and it reminded me of like being mm -hmm. with you in Phoenix, especially, uh, especially that time that I went there and I got really sick and like my uh -huh. eardrums were like about to pop. So whenever I hear that, um, mm -hmm. I always think of that. So do you have, uh, a song or, or anything that reminds you of a certain moment or anything like that? That's you associate with the memory. I think there's a lot of, to be honest with you, but, uh, there's one that is, it's people are going to say like, what? <laughs> uh downtown by Petula Clark. Okay. And I remember that brings me way back because mm -hmm. I think that song was popular when, when I was five or six. And that I think is that song every time I hear it, it's like just takes me back. That's downtown the one that's by like Petula a, Clark. Downtown. Town, it's yeah. Great when you're, okay, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. I know it's it's weird, but that's that's the one that yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. wow. I probably was like six, seven. I think what happened, I was in a trip with one of my uncles in a bus from Mexico City to like Chihuahua or yeah, somewhere. Those, yeah, I've heard of a lot of those classic stories. And then I, when we were in the bus, I remember here, I, I, something like that, you know, of course, fade, it, memories fade, but that's, but there's, there's a lot more. Yeah. That's one that if you ask me, what's the first one that will be the one? Another one for me that I'm thinking of right now is um, country song. Um, oh God, what is it? It's either um, "Forever and Never and Amen," mm -hmm. and um, a lot of the George Strait songs remind mm -hmm. me of the video that we have where it's me, Brenda, and Jonathan pretending to like play um, country, like country music with our instru with uh -huh. instruments, and it's like rackets and like uh, shuffles and stuff. Mm -hmm. That one yeah. is another one that reminds me. And then like usually when I go on road trips. Like I'll make, I'll listen to like an album I haven't heard of. So whenever I re-listen to that album, it kind of reminds me of, uh, of those things. So I also too, like I was listening to Lincoln Park on the way to mm -hmm. San Antonio and reminded me of like some memories that I had. And speaking of Lincoln Park, I think that was a band that you introduced me to. And it's funny to say that, really? that you introduced me to a lot of the, uh, uh a lot of bands or, or just music in mm. general. So I think. I had known about System of a Down, but I really got into them when you bought an album. And I was like, I didn't know you liked this this music. Uh, speaking mm -hmm. of Linkin Park, Dead Sarah was yeah. a band that you for sure got me into mm -hmm. because of <laughs> because of the, the name. Um, mm -hmm. Joe Purdy, oh, I think you even yeah. introduced me or like you were the first one to show me like Dua Lipa, if I'm not mistaken. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and maybe even this Olivia Rodrigo, thing. to be honest. I Maybe even her. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this is a big, big Dua Lipa house for me. <laughs> for, for, Bob doesn't really like her, does he? No, she does. She does. <laughs> All right. She actually likes it. Uh, so, th like we mentioned, the the, the movie documentary we're going to watch is about a soul, an R&B artist. So I'm curious to, to see who are some of your favorite soul and R&B artists, even funk. Which ones are the ones that stuck with you over the years? Well, of course, um, the OJs, uh, stylistics, you know, the that kind. Um I don't know if Earth, Wind, and Fire was one of them, but I remember. So when I was already, uh, I guess, my teen, that was big. And, and believe it or not, it, that was big in Mexico. Yeah, that's um, another question I was going to ask you. Was that stuff, like, really big in Mexico? Yeah, yeah. And, it, it you know, it was before all this uh, different platforms and everything. It was, yeah. You know, but there were some stations that really played some of the music um, and I really like the RB, you know, uh, of course, Stevie Wonder, 
all those, you know, um, and it was more jazz. It was Quincy Jones. And then, you know, of course, uh, Michael Jackson and yeah, and all of them. Um, interestingly enough, check this out. Uh, there's a, uh, I guess it's more like a jazz player. Like, uh, what's it? The guy's name, Buddy Miles, I think it was his name. He's a drum. Uh, check that. Um, we went to a concert there in Mexico. Many people don't know that Donna Summer, but that's she's more oh, like you went disco, to go see but... Donna Summer. Yeah. <laughs> so, Summer Donna. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, definitely. Um we we were really into that. Um I, I don't know, it's just it's just weird that being in Mexico, yeah. So yeah, Buddy Miles, if you Google it, he's there. So no, I definitely, definitely like that that genre. Um and I still do. I mean it's not as popular but you know it's funny because uh what's his name um Bruno Mars remember that one of the last albums he had they kind of went back to that to yeah that it was era. Uh, him and uh what Anderson pa uh Pac yeah Soul, and I, Soul Sonic I love yeah it's a really was, good album was really good yeah Those two two guys are really great yeah absolutely yeah so no I definitely was into that I was more you know as you know more the classic rock but yeah. I really like the Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, it would be probably Prince, Otis Redding, mm -hmm. Otis uh, Redding, uh, Otis, yeah. Um, R and B. I would say the like the, the more new, like the nineties R and B would be like Boys to Men, Keith Sweat, and of mm -hmm. course you got to give a shout out to uh, Cool and the Gang to uh, to the bro Larry Graham. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was that was really the uh, the music that I knew about, and of course there wasn't that many stations that played but we we manage we we really like the you know lou ross that's another one. Oh, okay you'll never find <laughs> another love like mine marvin gay uh-huh oh yeah marvin gay that's another one of my faves yeah good oh good, man good that, pull. that guy that guy was awesome and then uh when you moved to the states that's when you really got more into country yeah move i mean yeah, yeah. and then not only moving to the states but also Moving to Texas. <laughs> oh yeah, we forgot about Barry White. Barry White. Oh, okay, yeah. No, there there were definitely temptations and all that. So, being that how music is important to us, I know that between you and Mom and I, we've been to like so many concerts. Some of my earliest memories are, I think one of my earliest memories, Dad, is being at the at a Gary Morris concert. Gary Morris, Gary Morrison. Yeah, yeah Gary Morris. At, at like a Country. beach or something. I don't. I don't. I don't know it was that... like uh it was outside san antonio uh -huh. yeah yeah what was that town uh you know what was it yeah just outside san antonio they had a concert for a radio station and, and we then you, you uh taking me to go see the ninja turtles and then the garth brooks when i was a kid but yeah. and you and mom a lot of your dates even now as as you know as if, uh, empty nesters so to speak are yeah. going to concerts and mom was telling you've told me that one of your first dates was with you and mom was to a concert. Mm. Which one was that? Yeah, it was uh it was uh Rafael, okay. Mexico City. Oh, okay, wow. And uh yeah, uh, that was uh and he still, you know, we saw him a few years ago and uh, he was still you know bringing it. So, no, definitely that was that was a thing. You know, with your mom it was different because uh she didn't have the same opportunities if you will that we yeah. had, but mm -hmm. we definitely we definitely uh, like to go to concerts. Still do. It's been a while though. What was, but, what was the last uh, time you go? What you guys went to? The last concert yeah. last year, we went to to the YouTube Theater here. That you know, which by the way is a great venue. Uh who was it? <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, it was a it was a, a night. Oh, Mijares and uh, that's right. What's her name? Lucero. That was a good concert. I yeah. haven't been to a concert in a long. I can't even remember the last one I went to. Well, George Strait last year. George Strait. I mean, and then, you know, being here in Nashville, you can watch, you know, listen to music all the time. Mm -hmm. Now that we got that out of the way, just a little bit of backstory as far as me for this movie. That I found out about Charles Barkley because I'm Charles Barkley. See, now I'm, now I'm doing it. <laughs> Charles Barkley. I told you, you said it. Oh, oh okay. I'm going to text the text not, message. A, I'm almost no. positive I said Charles Bradley. <laughs> no, you did. Oh, okay. But I kept seeing Charles Barkley. But, yeah, I love that guy. I love Chuck. 
And <laughs> that would be something he probably could yeah, not right. do, but <laughs> his take on the women of, of San Antonio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. By the way, we before I forget, I don't know if you remember one of the things of the Ninja Turtles quote unquote concert or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember there were some groupies. Some women that were like going crazy, like it was, I don't know. Really? You know, yeah. I was like, that's the one thing I remember about that. I remember I did fall asleep a little bit, but I remember it was at the Majestic Theater, right? Yeah, correct. Uh-huh. And I'm like, why? I, even as a kid, as like what I was six, probably, if not mm-hmm. smaller, I was like, this is like a like a theater for plays. I like why? And I mean, at six years old, at six years old, I didn't know what a groupie was, so I don't, I don't think I even like registered it. <laughs> Speaking of groupies, you remember those ladies at the uh, Orange County? For, we went to see the Bee Gees. Oh, the the yeah the the Bee Gees cover <laughs> they band. Want, they wanted to dance with you. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> that was uh, quite embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were a minor, by the way. I was. We were look. We were kind of like. Okay, no, I think whatever. I was in that my. Happened. I think I was in my early twenties by that point. Oh no, you're already. Yeah, you're right. But they were mo- definitely were cougar. They were like. Oh, they the were. 40s. They were on the prowl for sure. Hmm. I mean, they were from the Orange County, so they probably had money. So I probably should have. Uh... That's why I think that's why we kind of just said, ah, whatever. We let it play out. <laughs> See where this takes. See where where this ship takes us. Yeah, exactly. We could move to Orange County. <laughs> we could have been living the high life. Exactly. Uh, all right, so the. Story about Charles Bradley is I heard one go. of his songs on the show Suits. So um, it's a scene where the main character Harvey is playing on his record player one of the songs, and I and I really liked it. And I'll show it to you later. Um, so mm-hmm. this was like 10, 15 years ago. So uh, well, probably 10 years ago. So you had to use Shazam to like figure out what the song was. I don't know if you remember uh-huh. Shazam. So then I found out and I found the album. But it's funny, but the song that made me like Charles Bradley is a song that he actually doesn't sing on. What it is, it's actually an instrumental of the band that backs him up, the uh, uh, Menahan Street Band. And I just heard that song and I was like, okay, that's cool. Let me listen to the rest of the album. And then like with that, I heard Mm -hmm. his music and his voice. So he has a very unique voice. And I'm going to leave you to decide what funk... uh, soul artist uh, that he remind there a lot of people remind him of mm-hmm. and with there's nothing else dad let's get into the movie let's let's watch this movie mm-hmm. um so we're gonna we're gonna watch the movie together we'll stop the recording and then come back and then we'll talk about the movie all right all righty then Sounds so good. we're ready to watch charles bradley not barkley charles bradley mm-hmm. soul of america all righty Already did that. <clears throat> What'd you think of this? Uh, very, it's a very short documentary, but I think there's a lot of, of good stuff in it. What'd you think about it? Well, it's pretty, pretty touching. I mean, to see how somebody just didn't stop, and, and you know, this his, his whole life is it's pretty, pretty rough. Yeah, yeah his know. whole life was it was a struggle. So, um, like you said, he spent most of his time trying to make it he said in in the documentary it was like 42 years uh trying to make it um but you can see that all that time really helped him to like develop his personality and so his mm-hmm. first record didn't come out until he was 62 that's mm-hmm. that's crazy to think that like somebody found success like that it's not that late in life but usually you see like like athletes musicians actors they usually start like in their 20s you know yeah and even in the music, I mean, people, some, you know, they start young, but. It's hard to make it, like, make it big that, even, like, past your 30s. Yeah. Although nowadays, I'm going to go with my little side commentary, you know, with all these platforms, you know. Yeah. It, it seems that, I mean, there's people with talent, but not everybody has the talent. They just have the platform and then. Yeah. But, I mean, it's sad to see that somebody that really even nowadays, that has talent, the, the raw talent, yeah, yeah, they just don't get recognized. And there's other people who honestly don't have the talent and make it huge. And when you see them, uh, yeah, I agree. You know, a concert and live, they can't perform. It's just like 
So it's funny you say that because I do think it's it's uh it has its, its good things and its bad things. One of it being mm-hmm. that with these platforms you get a lot more exposure, but at the uh-huh. same time it gives exposure to people that probably wouldn't have gotten it otherwise. You know, and it's just like exactly. I wonder how some of these musicians they've been struggling all their lives. You know, like the the charts, you know, or the world that yeah. just never made it. And then you have these people that have basically no talent. <laughs> make it big, but I mean, that's life, right? That is life in general. You have to kind of change with the times as well. And a lot of those Absolutely. people have to figure out like, well, social media is a thing now. How can I adapt mm-hmm. to that? So we were talking, we, we mentioned several times that he was 68 years or 62 years old when he got his big break. So I've written down, I hear a couple of people and, and they're famous celebrities that got their big break older in life. So Sam mm-hmm. Jackson got Pulp Fiction at 46. Mm-hmm. Now he had been in the small world uh, roles and other stuff, but at 46, he got Pulp Fiction. Uh, Morgan Freeman, he got Drive Him as Daisy at 52. Mm-hmm. Um, Christoph Waltz, um, he comes out in a lot of the Tarantino movies. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Academy Award winner. He got Inglorious Bastards at 53, although he had been acting in Europe and, and other uh, for yeah. decades, but his big debut. Someone that was actually in the uh, the documentary, Sharon, Sharon Jones, mm-hmm. she got her first album at 46. Mm-hmm. And then um, I'm sure you've heard of Susan Boyle. She was on Amer- uh, Britain's Got Talent mm-hmm. uh, at 47 yeah. when that happened. So it really doesn't matter. Like <laughs> Age is just a number. You could start... You know your your career whenever whenever your time comes, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and one in, interesting fact is that um, that people that have been huge elsewhere, and you know, not here. I mean, one of them, Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. But what I understand, he was big in Europe, but here nobody knew about. Nobody him. knew about him. <laughs> Which is one of the points I was going to make that it was interesting how they came up with a song. It's hard to make it in America. Mm-hmm. when that scene where or he was explaining one of the guys from the the band was explaining mm-hmm. that somebody was asking him in paris or in france yeah like oh is sharon jones as big and as big in yeah. the states as oh, she is right. here in europe and he said well no it's hard to make it in america and they made the song you know it's hard to make it in america but when charles bradley sang it yeah. i it took on a different meaning <laughs> not so yeah. much like the fame of making it in America, try to make it big, but also just just trying to make a From living, just, just try to survive, especially, and you and I have yeah. talked about this extensively, um, people that are, are minorities, specifically like Black America, it's hard for them to to make it in America just because of the way, you know, our, yeah, system, the, our system is. Not, not. I'm not yeah. talking about the United States, I'm just talking about the world in, in general. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, and, and, um, it, it was it was really touching when you see his situation and yeah. I didn't quite follow, but it's not like his his mama was like taking care of him, right? No. And she basically left him and yeah. So so in the interviews, it's really funny that like I hit those. So the guys that are talking about that are his uncles, and they're yeah, yeah. they're just spilling the tea <laughs> of everything. Yeah. So uh-huh. um, oh no, she left him. She she basically <laughs> she left him and f- abandoned him. He was born in Florida. She moved to New York and they were, she, I, if I'm not mistaken, she says something like, Oh, I, I left to make a better life for our yeah, kids. Like, but then the, like, uh-uh. the brothers were like, no, he, she had an affair with somebody who was married. It was and, married. And he went to go chase them. And it's funny yeah. because like, she'll say like, Oh, I left because of this, or I did this because of this. And there the uncles are like, yeah, uh, no. Nah. <laughs> um, and then she was on welfare and then, mm-hmm. oh, she's like, oh, I wanted to have my kids with me. And then the uncles were like, well, the reason no. she got the kids back was because if she had them with her, had they would get had more kids. They would give her more money. I know. <laughs> I like, but, you know, um, it's interesting to see that even though they had a really strained relationship when they were younger, he still kind of seemed like a mama's boy. And then, like, yeah. Yeah, I I mean, I don't have that situation. I know you don't either as far as like having a complicated relationship with our mothers. But I, I would find it really hard to like be my mother's caregiver at that age, at that age. Yeah. And then also, yeah, and you could tell he still has a little bit of, I don't know, yeah. resentment or just like it, it's complicated for him to, to deal with all that stuff. 
but that, that shows a good human being. And, and the thing yeah. that I really like about character. him is that, that he could go, see, this shows you that you don't have, just because your cir circumstances are not the best, that you need to go the wrong path and, yeah. and then just get into crime or whatever, you know. It, it's a choice. You know, it really is a choice. A, no matter what your upbringing is, no matter, it's a choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, and like you said, you and I, we cannot put ourselves in a situation. We've been very blessed to, to have a steady family and, and friends and, and support system, but it's, you know, it's really hard for people like they're in that situation and like, like he showed, like, I, you don't have to go that path. He could be like a complete you know, criminal, criminal and, and take yeah, it against the world. He was homeless at 14. He had to move out of his house because of his situation with his mother. But even then, mm -hmm. um, it, that still didn't really change his path as far as... And then w even at 14, he wanted to like... Uh, he went to... Oh, God, what was that called? Car like a career opportunities kind of thing? Yeah, job something. Uh -huh. Job Corps. That's what it was. Job Corps. And even through that, he learned to be a cook. So you could see he always never let those situations like lead him towards something like a, like a mm -hmm. life of crime. Do you think those situations like helped him like shaped his music? Like his, I, I was going to say that because when you have that, and that's really the basis of, Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you that I actually went to see James Brown in Mexico. What? Back in the day. Yes. Yes. Um, and I remember, so you awesome. know, they did the whole, yeah, the, the whole cave. The cave, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they come. And, you know, I just heard the music. I didn't know what he was, you know, the stage performance. Yeah, and it yeah. was exactly mm -hmm. like he was doing it. He did the whole thing when he kind of kneeled down and they bring the cape and all that. So, yeah, I, I forgot about that when I saw it. I was like, oh, yeah, I did that. But going back to your question, I think that, uh, you know, that's the basis of, Gold and blues, right? The 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 suffering mm -hmm. and, and everything, and uh, that's why uh, one of the comedians that uh, that I heard back in the day, I think with George Carlin, that people, white people, singing about, you know, soul and blues. <laughs> it's like, what do you, <laughs> what do you got to what, suffer? What do you say? Like my membership of the glove club, you know, <laughs> raised the fees, <laughs> or something like that. My HOA went. Went up twenty five dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and I think <laughs> Chappelle have such insight into some of those things. That, like it's 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 really insightful. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. And you know what's what's funny? I, I was saying that at towards the end, it's kind of a shame that not that it's not. How can I say this without sounding? It's a shame that a lot of the people that were there at his concert weren't actually like from his community. Yeah, I was like, like you would want like them to be there, but I, mean, I guess that's just the way that it that it goes. <laughs> But that's really what music is about, right? I mean, to transcend, you yeah, know, that's true. we talk about this, how rock and roll really started with the African-Americans. Yeah. Uh, country music. You know, country and, uh, you know, rap and all that stuff. And, yeah, hip -hop. you know, and, and that's because, you know, going back to that question about the, uh, if the life experiences shape you into creating a certain kind of, art music and whatever that's that's true i think so um you know it it, it doesn't mean that other people or the cultures cannot embrace it or or actually do it that's true yeah but really when when you when you heard him sing you could tell like one of the people there right there's that one of the audience ladies i think said you know when he says i love you you really feel you really that feel it yeah yeah yeah, and on all this coming from somebody who is illiterate. Absolutely. That was <laughs> that was my really boy to me. And he he was like, and I'm like, so how does he remember the like they were saying what well, it takes him a while to figure it out? Like he writes it how he can, mm -hmm. but my goodness, like all the things that were against this person, uh, against mm -hmm. Charles Bradley to but he still found a way to to overcome. And you can tell that it doesn't it might it might bother him, which we're gonna talk about later, but he doesn't, he doesn't uh, project it. Like yeah. he has a very good outlook <laughs> on a lot of things. That was really touching. Uh, I wonder if he's still active or not. Cause he, you know, six, that was what, 2011. Yeah, so. yeah. so he did actually pass away. Um, oh. He passed away in 2007. I'm sorry, 2017. Um, with that kind of, to me, adds another layer of like this whole thing, because 
it was just a few years after he had achieved like that uh, success. Mm -hmm. So he was 62 and he died at 68. Um, oh, wow. Even though, and even though his career was short lived, uh, I, I, and it's kind of bittersweet, and despite facing all that adversity, mm -hmm. he managed to to leave a lasting legacy with with some people. Yeah, what do you say you found? I was watching the show Suits, mm -hmm. um, and they were just playing this music in the background, and I looked it up, and I'll, I'll play the song for you uh, in a bit. Uh, the one that I, that I actually was listening to, and that's how I found it. And as a matter of fact. Um, one of the things that I found interesting is that he was saying like a lot of the things that he was going through, like he was like, Oh, sometimes I come here and I just want to, cause I want to get away and, and, and I want to get away or I want to like be by myself and stuff like that. But I don't know if you got the sense too, that he was probably suffering from like trauma, like post-traumatic stress from like the traumas that he went through as a kid mm -hmm. or even like depression that was just yeah, yeah. undiagnosed. I don't know if you got that sense from that. Yeah, and the thing is that, um, you know, that uh, that you could tell that all that sooner or later is going to catch up with yeah. you. And I think he, he, he definitely has uh, issues, you know, deep inside. Uh, again, that also kind of contributes to the music <laughs> to some degree. But it's really good, um, you know, that to see a story like that, that, uh, you know, no matter what, you could still have... Um, success even in your you know latter years but that's one thing that uh you know that that song and that that had that uh you know that you know you need to live your life like uh like live you, your you life like you don't have much <laughs> like you don't have much yeah and, and also as, i think he did as you get older you know people and of course at some point you have to because of medical reasons settle down but that's another topic maybe for another movie, you know, yeah. that don't, uh, don't just, you know, get on your rock and share and start, you know, talking about the past, you know, because there's so much in life still ahead of you. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and at the end you may have regrets that, you know, I could have done this and that, but I just choose you not to. And, and in his case, it's like he could have, I mean, at 62, was going to say like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to continue. So I, I'm glad that at, at the end, you know, he had. A, he a was good... able to, to achieve some sort yeah. of success. And mm -hmm. you know, it's really interesting that I feel like he had, like you were saying that when he told people, I love you, like he generally meant it. And it, he had very, like a lot of childlike qualities that that he had a very positive outlook on the world, even you know, all uh -huh. the stuff that we said that he, he suffered through. And the other thing they suffered through was his, his brother was murdered, was murdered for no reason for yeah. no, for no, for the money in his wallet. And not only was it just his brother, like he said, like he looked up to him, like that was his hero. Yeah. That was his dad too. <laughs> yeah. That was basically his, his, his surrogate dad. And it just, and it, and it kind of goes back to like, why is it so hard to make it in America? Like all the struggles that he went through and it changed, mm -hmm. it really changed the perspective of the, of the song for me um mm -hmm. and and another another really cool thing and i'll show you i'll send you the song but he does a cover of the song changes by black sabbath mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's a really good song and i think uh, other than um i got the love uh, which is one of his bigger songs i think that one mm -hmm. was and it's amazing how he was able to take a rock song from ozzy osbourne black sabbath and like make it into to a a, a soul song mm-hmm um, so, and another thing, so I actually did go see this, this guy live, uh, Charles Bradley. It was at, uh, the Santa Monica pier. It was like, I think every year Santa Monica, the pier has like a free concert series. Mm -hmm. And then, so that's where I went to go, go see him and Brennan John, uh, took me Uh real quick. I want to play you, um, the song that I heard mm -hmm. first, the song that was like his famous, famous one. So this is just a, this song is just an instrumental. And from that, I was like, "Oh, that's a cool, like you know, song." And then it went into me looking at looking it up. But if you look on uh, YouTube Music, it has it. And then the other one, uh, I got to love. Strictly, strictly reserve is what it's called. Strictly reserved by Charles Bradley, not Charles Barkley, but Charles Bradley. And just for a second, we could talk about man. He has an amazing voice. He has no. It's not his fault that he, he sounds just like James Brown. Yeah, I think at the beginning. And they said it right. You don't need to be James Brown. Yeah, he was really he was really struggling to find his own identity because he had been 
James Brown, like, uh, impersonator for like 20 years. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think at the end, and even, you know, the, the few clips they had, he still had a little bit of that. And, but the voice and everything is on can. He sounds just like him. He really does. As someone who has seen him, uh, you probably can attest to that. Oh uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, hopefully he, he did find his, his, uh, his voice. Yeah, his his voice. The like those those guys, his friends. They told him that. Yeah, and so he, even though he never found huge success, he still did receive critical acclaim. Um, well, and and, uh, and I, know, think was, I, I think it was I think it was yeah yeah toward yeah. Europe. I, I think that's just you know kind of somehow t how it is that you just have to tour Europe and other, like you said, Jimi Hendrix. I know Kings of Leon for the longest time were only famous in in Europe. The same with like Muse. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of other, or even Australia or Japan. Weren't the mm -hmm. Beatles like first, like really big in, in Germany? England? Yeah. In uh, Germany, like, Germany. That's what it was. And like Japan too, I think before they mm -hmm. like made it big in, in, uh, in Britain. Mm -hmm. Or is this a, is this an artist you're going to uh, listen to? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I'll look into it. It's, you know, it's weird because, um, lately we've been getting a little bit back into country. I know you would. Marie and John, you don't really follow the some the of the new newest ones. artists. Yeah, yeah. We're really into Jelly Roll now. And if you hear some of his songs, uh, they're really touching. There's the last one that he's got was like, uh, I know, right? Have you heard that song? Oh, which song then? It's not okay, but it's gonna be all right. Mm -mm. That song you need to listen to. I think it's the same thing that we're talking about. Yeah. You know, well, the struggles. All the struggles. Yeah, because he struggled a lot. A lot. He was in the prison system at some point, right? Yeah, he was in jail from like 18 to 24 and everything. But see, that's another example of of somebody who struggled and then he came out and, and made it big. And you can hear that in the songs yeah. that he writes. I mean, he made a lot of probably a lot of terrible mistakes, but he was able to absolutely, to flip yeah. And around. he he owns it and everything. He paid the price said, for you know, it. <laughs> he he owed his debt to society. If you hear any of the interviews, he says, you know, I know I, I was not a good person. He probably hurt a lot of people. I don't I don't know, but but he said, you know, at the end of the day, you have to kind of just own it and yeah. And so, um, you know, that's the kind of music that, that we like. So uh, I I really haven't heard a lot of new music other than, you know. I was about to ask him and any, any any new stuff. Yeah, just uh, country a little bit, you know, Lainey Wilson and, and some of the other uh, people that I know you and Bree and John is like, that's not country. Well, oh, that's mostly them. I, I listen to Joe Purdy. Yeah, there you go. If you ask me, Beyonce... Has a country album, but you know, <laughs> uh, let's not talk about that, Brian. <laughs> that's your opinion. That's fine. Uh, yeah. So, but, um, but, um, did it better than most people. Well, then in that case, what, when Stefani is going to make a country sure album, so I don't know. She's married to a country artist. <laughs> well, let me correct myself. She made a, a, a album with a variety of different music. She had a couple country songs, but I don't mm -hmm. think it was a strict country album. Yeah. I know. Like Black, uh, was it Texas Hold'em, the uh -huh. Jolene cover? Those are country songs, but I think the uh -huh. album is because I think there's like jazz. If you've heard it, it's really it's a really good album. Um, it has like mm -hmm. jazz, it has like pop, a country. So no, and, and uh, but uh, I probably once I listen more of of Charles, then I can get back. It's just you know that's the, the beautiful thing about our family. We listen to almost everything except banda music which well i mean sorry, even even know. then even then, it i i, I just can't stand it See, i would say i don't listen to banda music i listen to song like a song or two like if a song's good yeah no I, I know but, but like but, to say like oh yeah. i i went to go see los tigres yeah, del like, norte so los was it tu, tucan tucan is de Tijuana or whatever it was, it, 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 even those guys i think they have some sort of talent and i guess you can say okay, but some of those guys that I listen that I heard Los Narcos, you know, the narco uh, ones. <laughs> the narco corridos is like that's yeah, a perfect example of somebody yeah. not having talent. Well the perfect example of not, perfect, not having perfect example talent. of social media. Of uh, them getting hyped up on social media. Yeah, the 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 uh it's like I, I love my culture, uh you know, Mexican culture that anybody can just stand in the corner 
pretend to sing. There's 10 guys that join them, start banging or whatever. Uh, I, find, I used to work at a restaurant that music. had music like that, so I, I know it. And I'm like, as someone who played instruments, like as a kid in band, I'm like, they're not playing. They're not even playing the same key. Like they're just like, no, bump, bump. I think the only person that actually did anything good was the drummer. <laughs> Absolutely. No. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Like, Come on, guys. <laughs> But, but it, you know, there's different genres for every yeah. people, and, and that's fine. But, but different going back for different to, folks. yeah, the, the, uh, we listen from, you know, rock to soul to some of the jazz, uh, some, you know, R&B and, and music uh, in other languages, techno, too. techno, yeah. um, yeah, and of course, Spanish too, the good Spanish, and French music. and uh, Italian. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, music is is universal, or obviously, and and then music is a big part of our our worship. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's like music is like like food, right? There's really good food, and there's not so great food, but <laughs> you know, it is what it is. But yeah, that's part. It's like almost saying like you know, music is like food, right? It's, yeah. it's like you need to have it. You, can you imagine a world without music? I can't. <laughs> yeah, that'd be boring. You know. I, yeah. our, all those plane rides would be so boring. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Which, yeah. by the way, um, one of the bands I mentioned earlier was Linkin Park. Have you heard the, some of the new Linkin Park stuff? Yeah. I, I, I heard one or two songs. I really need to get back into I, it. The, okay, so I listened, I've listened to both the, them doing the, the old Linkin Park stuff. Uh -huh. And they came out with two new songs with the new singer, uh -huh. uh, Emily, Emily yeah. Armstrong from Dead Sarah, which is another great band. Mm hmm that you were the one that showed me, but uh -huh. the two new songs where they're like their original songs with them, they're uh -huh. really good. And it's very Lincoln. It's very Lincoln park. Yeah. What I struggled with and it has nothing to do with Emily. She's a great singer, but it was just hard for me to listen to somebody else. That's not Chester. It could have literally Chester. been anybody else. And it's just like hard to listen to like some of the classics yeah. with somebody else. Yeah, and, and we talked about that. Remember uh, a few months ago, I said I I wish they could go because I mean the band, you know, the the band was great. Yeah, of course Chester was the centerpiece. That's a good one to get back into. Yeah. Uh, Lincoln Park. I love Lincoln Park. It's a shame you never got to see uh, Chester. Yeah, I never got to see him, but uh, I did like you know, four or five times. I never got to see Prince either. So. Man, or Juan Gabriel. Oh, Juan Gabriel. There you go. That's another one. I'm fortunate that we did get to see all all the. I mean, you've seen you've seen Paul McCartney what two three times now. Uh huh. We saw Paul. We and saw Ringo, Ringo. Um, Ringo Garth Brooks, four. and um, no, George Strait. George Strait. Willie. We saw Willie. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, yeah. Chris Christopherson, man. Yeah. That one. Mom Indian said. Bobby mom Mikey. said that one hurt her a little bit because she really liked Chris Christopherson. I know. Star is born. But um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you guys remember Ubri. That we went to see. This is something that I, I treasure. That we went to see Fleetwood Mac. Yep. When they came back together, the dance, one the of dance the tour. First, yeah, that's one of the first concerts we went to, and 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 I'm like, you know what? I got to see them live, all five of them, right? That was the first rock concert I ever went to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I remember it was at the Alamo Dome. It was all four of us. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was a it, great it show. It was great. Yeah, it was a great show. And and there's nothing like going to a live concert, right? I mean, that's why it's just like that whole intro, right? Yeah, and then, the, you know, the, the first song they played was The Chain. Yeah. And now and, that they don't play together anymore, and then Christy McVie is, is no, passed, too. No, that's not necessary. But going <laughs> back to, to Lincoln Park, we're, we're all over the place. No, that's here, fine. But, but um, going back to that, it's almost like saying, like, say, the, and of course, the, the Stones, they probably need to retire now but that's okay i mean i i, I think i heard you remember uh that's Grace another band we were from... to see the stones and right yeah, what, exactly. it was like two months after charlie watts passed yeah what was that grace lake from uh Jess jefferson airplane she says you know once you get at a certain age you should just retire i i you know i, the I who? like this <laughs> who yeah especially those guys that had that voice yeah that I'm pretty sure that the singer cannot sing just no. it's like Chester at 65, 70, he could probably not sing. Yeah, probably. Him and Chris Cornell, another one that Yeah, Chris gone Cornell. Oh man, those, yeah. 
<laughs> that, that they're going to so. those two hurt man <laughs> those two really hurt. i know back to back but um so no i i think that uh you know some of those bands they're you know it's like saying like the, the stones like mick jagger is no singing with them but they still the rolling stones and kind of, but all that they have that history but i think i'll, I'll give a lincoln park you know uh uh a shot in in the, that's one thing that I'm gonna try to to listen yeah. to. The one band that I really want to go see soon is uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. I never got to see them, and I think John Frusciante the is back with them. Mm -hmm. But I actually did go see see them with Brenda actually mm -hmm. in San Antonio. I know I remember that, um, but that's one concert I'll probably be looking for. My Chemical Romance, it's it's really weird now that they're like grown men in their 50s, talk, like with families and mortgages, and they're like singing about uh, teenage angst. I'm like, all right, guys. Like, as you know yeah. that they're my favorite band of all time, but I'm just like, mm -hmm. all right. Like, <laughs> yeah, you need to. You grow. have teenagers. Like, come on. <laughs> I know, but uh, no, it it's, uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens with uh, this, this band and, hopefully they'll they'll grow and but yeah definitely we want to go and see um red hot chili peppers mom mom wants to see him yeah maybe take it uh, for an anniversary or if they're in nashville or yeah, charlotte maybe. even mm -hmm. by the way um before we go on the final thoughts um jerry springer style we got to go back to new york man because mm -hmm. he i mean in the whole he's from new york so he, and he lived in the projects mm-hmm some of the he was like oh there's like gunshots all the time and like i have to go to my mom's house but other than that we got to go back to new york it's been i don't know how long it's been for you but it, for me it's been like oh gosh almost 15 forever. years if not more yeah so um yeah once we uh, if, uh you know we get to to go there to corral it's like five it's, i think it's like an eight hour drive and maybe one one and a half hour Definitely. One, th then we'll do the East Coast yeah, for sure. The East Coast swing. Uh, all right. Mm -hmm. So what are your final thoughts on this movie did you, did you, or documentary? You like? You liked it? I did. And uh, I'm definitely going to listen to Charles yeah. Barkley. Charles Barkley. <laughs> or Gnarls Barkley. Charles Bradley. Yeah. Charles Bradley, guys. I'm sure I said it like a hundred times, Charles Barkley. <laughs> no, I definitely. And, and then, um, you know, kind of get back into that a little more and definitely... A little more um, funk and soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in fact, uh, I need to get some of those for my next karaoke <laughs> day. Because I'm really into it now. Maybe, who knows, maybe at 67 I will become a sensation. A karaoke star. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you go to the Philippines, they love the karaoke over there. I know. Well, here in Korea, Thailand. That's too, true. Right? That's true. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> definitely, I can do that. All righty then. But yeah. no, that was that was really, I really enjoyed. Well, thank you, thank you so much, Dad, for making the time. I know you, you guys are busy with uh, the congregation and trying to figure out the move. But uh -huh. um, I hopefully I'll see you guys soon. Either me coming, oh, going over there, or you guys coming over here. All right. All right then. Uh, thank you so much, Dad. I appreciate your time. All righty. Hello, everybody. Just coming a little bit. Hello, everybody. Just coming at the. Hello, everybody. Just coming at the beginning of this uh, podcast. Just to uh, make a few corrections that I noticed while editing this uh, particular episode. So for one, uh, we recorded this over Zoom. And there is a little bit of lag between my responses and my dad's responses. So I try to cut that out. Um, the other thing is to, during the podcast, I did play some music uh, for my dad. And when you listen to the podcast, you'll realize why I did that. But in order for, but I had to take that out before, but I had to take out the music because of copyright reasons. So there's sometimes, you'll, you'll notice it in the podcast that I say, oh, I'm going to play this song, but then I actually don't. I cut to us just talking about it. And then the other thing was, and then, and then another thing was that I mentioned that Larry Graham was from Cool in the Gang, but he's actually from Sly and the Family Stone. When I was listening to the edit, I noticed, I was like, okay, wait, why would I say that? But I think I just got those mixed up. And then there was one other thing, but I completely whiffed and I forgot. 
what it was. And then <clears throat> one last thing you'll notice is that I keep saying Charles Barkley when I actually mean Charles Bradley. I do clarify it in the podcast, but just keep that in mind. I say Charles Barkley like about five times. All right. Thank you so much, guys, for listening to this episode. Episode number nine with my dad. And we're reviewing the music documentary, our very first documentary, the music documentary, Charles Brackley, Soul of America.